This is Business Analytics Using Forecasting, and I'm Galit Shmueli. In the next set of videos, we're going to look at the issue of evaluating the predictive performance of forecasting models. We're going to look at three crucial elements. One is mimicking the deployment scenario. One is creating simple benchmarks. And the third is looking at performance charts and metrics. Before we can discuss any of those, we have to discuss the concept of data partitioning. The purpose of evaluating the performance of a model is to try and figure out how well the forecasting model will work in practice when we deploy it. We're going to have to look at two parts of this. One are things that are related to forecast accuracy, but the other have to do with practical implications. Forecast accuracy has to be tied with what are going to be the implications of that forecast accuracy. A main question that we're going to ask ourselves is whether we really care about data fit. Specifically, we learn in statistics that we have to fit our model really well to the data. In forecasting, the scenario is a little bit different. So whether the best fitting model is the best forecaster, the answer turns out to be no. In fact, a model which fits the data too well doesn't necessarily forecast well. And a perfect fit can always be obtained by using a model with enough parameters that's flexible enough. The biggest danger in forecasting is overfitting. And overfitting a model to data is as bad as failing to identify the systematic pattern in the data. This is a quote from the online textbook by Heinemann and Athanasopoulos. To avoid the overfitting pitfall, the trick is to mimic the deployment scenario. This is where the notion of data partitioning comes in. Let's consider some real data for a moment. Amtrak is the passenger railroad service in the United States. Let's look at monthly Amtrak ridership series. Here's data on monthly ridership between January 1991 to March 2004. So where does this data partitioning come in? Suppose that we want to forecast future monthly figures of this Amtrak ridership series. To do that, we partition the series into three periods. The period we would like to forecast is the future. We do not have data for that period. Then we take the data that we do have and partition it into training and validation periods. We will then shift ourselves in time back to the end of the training period and pretend that we do not see the validation data. In other words, we'll use the training period, but we will be blind to the validation data period while we're building our forecasting model. Then we generate forecasts for the validation period, and only then do we reveal the validation data and see how well we forecasted that period. Let's formalize this process into the following steps. We have training, validation, and future partitions. We fit the model only to the training period. We assess performance on the validation period. And when we deploy the model, that is when we use the future period. Before we actually deploy the model, we go through a step where we recombine our training and validation periods and rerun the model on the entire series. This is important because, first of all, we have more data. And secondly, the validation period has the most recent data that are usually most important for future forecasts. After we do this, we can use our final model to forecast the future. A question that might come to your mind is how to partition the data into training and validation. What is a good partitioning? The answer really depends on the business goal and on the data. What is the forecast horizon that you need? Does the series have seasonality? How long is your series? And maybe the scenario or the conditions that are affecting your series have changed over time. So we'll have to think about the data and we'll have to think about the business problem in order to choose how to partition the series. In partitioning the data, we have two options. We can choose a fixed partitioning, where after a certain date, the training period ends and the validation begins. Or we can use rolled forward partitioning, where we partition the series multiple times, each time moving the training period further ahead. Thereby, we're shortening the validation period. Or we can keep the old data and not drop it out. 
In each partitioning, we would follow the workflow of running the model on the training period and generating forecasts for the validation period. Why would we want to work so hard with roll-forward partitioning? Roll-forward partitioning has a few advantages. First of all, we get multiple examples of one step ahead behavior. We can get the forecast and the forecast errors. We get multiple examples of forecast and forecast errors for one step ahead behavior, two step ahead behavior, and so forth. Secondly, we can learn when the one step ahead performs well. Maybe it works really well on weekdays, but doesn't work very well on weekends. Maybe it works better on holidays. And lastly, many times the deployment scenario itself is roll forward, where every month we receive a new data point and we need to create new forecasts. In that case, a roll forward partitioning mimics the exact deployment scenario. The bottom line is that in order to evaluate how well a forecasting method will work into the future, we're going to try and mimic the deployment scenario by partitioning our series into training and validation periods. We'll pretend that the training is what we know and the validation is what we do not know. We're going to treat the validation as if it were the future. We then fit the models only to the training period and use them to forecast data in the validation period. Finally, we can compare our forecasts to the actual data in the validation period, which will help us figure out how well we're doing. We also discussed fixed partitioning versus roll forward partitioning and the advantages of using either. With this, we complete talking about partitioning and next we will be talking about naive forecasts and later about performance charts and metrics.